um, this is probably, um, well, it is, this is going to be the most um, heavy and intense and um, emotional live stream that I will have ever done at this point. And to be perfectly honest, I hope that it is the heaviest and most intense live stream that I ever have to do because um, it's it's concerning a lot of touchy material and um, a lot of people that I know and care about have been hurt by it. Um, so I'm just gonna preface this for a minute. Um, out of respect for the deceased and the bequeathed um, or bereaved rather, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not gonna be posting any any of my links, my personal links, um, Mod Squad, please just refrain from posting um, any of my cash links or t-shirts or whatever. I'm not, <clears throat> it's just not appropriate for this and I'm not gonna be monetizing uh, this stream. And you'll, you'll have to give me a little bit of grace here as I struggle through this because um, it's, it, it's a lot. Um, so, and it's not going to be fun. This is going to be a fucking, this is going to be an ordeal. It's going to be a struggle. And it's, it has been for the last, um, about year and three and a half months. Uh, so if this is your first time on my live stream, uh, this is not, this is not going to be a fun one. And you might decide that you want to go back and watch something more fun and uh, light and entertaining. So if you would like to do that, now would be a good time to do that. And um, if I start crying during stream, please don't make fun of me. <laughs> and if you, if you do, then, you know, fuck off. Um, because yeah, th this has been outstanding for a while. Um, so I, I started, I actually started writing a script to do this. And I wanted to do like a, a professional, tasteful, like documentary style expose. I'm actually sitting in front of the desktop here. Um, that's why I'm sitting in a different spot than I have been. Um, and I, uh, I start, yeah, I started writing it out and I started collecting information. Um, I had been collecting information since the, uh, since the situation first started. Well, that's not true. I, I started collecting information as soon as it became apparent that I had direct personal contact with multiple people who were directly involved and that I had information that other people didn't have. Um, and, and that, um, the law enforcement of Imperial County was not um, was not doing their job, and really, nobody was. So let let me just I'm just gonna read from my script here a little bit because I'm I've got it in front of me along with a bunch of uh, screenshots that I'm not going to show you directly. I'm just going to like read them to you throughout the stream, um, and. We're, we're gonna just, we're just gonna slog through this together. And um, let me just start with a disclaimer that I am not a professional investigator by any means. I was not in Slab City during this time. I had just left. Um, and if anybody was in contact with me during the time um, between my leaving Slab's and Poe going missing and then learning about what happened next. Um, if, if you know me at all or were in contact with me, then you know that I had expressed um, in no short terms, no short words, that I was done with helping other people and that I was done um, solving issues and problems and being in that type of role in Slab City at that time. I, I was over it. 
I just wanted to do corn shit. That's me, I'm corn. I'm gonna talk during this live stream as though you've never seen one of my live streams before. That way you can catch up and like know what's going on and that this piece can be kind of a standalone. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna read from my script here. Uh, and it's, <laughs> um, uh, anyway, this is really hard. Um, on May 11th, 2021, the body of 21 year old trans man, Poe Black, AKA Legion was found dead and riddled with stab wounds in the Coachella Canal uh, near Slab City, California, where he had been residing. I don't have the exact amount of time that he had been living there. There's like a parentheses question mark, but it was, it was a few months and he was intending to spend the summer there. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so I'm gonna explain to you like you have no fucking clue. Um, Slab City is an infamous squatter town built mostly out of salvage on a long abandoned military base in the Sonoran Desert near the Mexican border. It is home to an array of misfits and those who have rejected society or who have been rejected by it. I was and still consider myself one of its long-term residents. Uh, at the time, I was gearing up to head out for an indefinite amount of time. I am out, I'm in New Orleans right now. And um, <clears throat> my address is still in Slab City, um, but other than having the physical address there, I'm just living out of my car or my backpack essentially. So one could say I'm like diet homeless at this point. I guess, I don't know, um, but anyway, um, so let me just give you a little short background on me. I've, I've done it many times before my live streams. Um, so I was living on the streets in, in the Twin Cities as, um, as a young 20 something and ended up hitting the road. I found Slab City. Um, and I just really fell in love with it. So I ended up moving into what was remaining of the library and built the space out to a much greater capacity. And I created my own physical address, which I hadn't had a home in a very long time. So it felt uh, really nice to be able to have somewhere that I can be like, yeah, that's, that's my address, that's my place. Um, and um, so I lived there for nearly seven years, um, building up and running the library. So a lot of people don't really know how Slab City works. And I have talked about this again in other live streams. Um, so I'm not gonna be too redundant, but basically, um, Basically, it's kind of a it's kind of a free for all. It's it's an anarchist environment. There's no like, there's no mayor or you know somebody that tells you what you can and can't do. It's it's a patch of desert, and you can build what you want. And over the last uh, decade, a number of folks. I mean, there there were people doing it before uh, now, but uh, the kind of current era of how Slab City is. Um, kind of started cultivating about 10 years ago when instead of just uh, retirees in their RVs, sometimes they would have like collective camps and circle the wagons and have like parties and stuff. But now there's like camps that are establishments and collectives. And um, there's a number of them, but uh, one of these was, um, uh, a camp that was closely allied with my camp, which was my camp was uh, the library. And this camp uh, is located on the opposite side of Slab City. And it's called Flamingo Camp. And it's still there and the library is still there. And um, there's the handlebar, which uh, burned to the ground recently. And um, there's, there's a number of other camps. I'm not gonna name them all off, but suffice it to say, 
there's um, a handful of collective camps spread across slabs and you kind of just find your niche and become part of the community in whatever capacity that you see works for you. Um, so at the time I had left Slab City to head out on the road indefinitely, Poe was residing at an alley camp called Flamingo Camp, as I said, um, established and run by my friend. Um, I'm gonna, okay, so I'm not trying to put anybody's names on blast during this stream. And I have a feeling that there are going to be follow-up streams on this topic. My intention here is to reopen this conversation because, because a lot of people, I guess uh, you're gonna have to bear with me here. I'm trying to organize my thoughts in a way that isn't like confusing. Um, so, okay, so the reason I'm making this video in the first place is actually, um, like, like I said, I intended to write a script and like put out, you know, uh, an edited, well thought out, like, you know, good, cool live stream. Um, and then I realized that I just, it's, it's a little bit over my head right now because like I said, I am like diet homeless kind of and um, I'm doing a lot and I'm personally, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to get through my damn day like everybody else. Um, so it became clear that I was not gonna have ample time to like do it in the way that I envisioned and that it deserves quite honestly. So then um, I got a tip on a, a journalist that was looking for information on this case and um, that they were seeming to be okay. I had um, spoken to a couple of other journalists over the last like year and few months, but they were always just kind of sketchy. And um, so this this person contacted me a few days ago. We've been playing phone tag for a while, um, but when when we got to talking about the situation, it it became really clear to me that she was in over her head too. And the the problem with these journalists trying to um, report on this situation is that it's so fringe like slab city in and of itself if you're uninitiated if you're unfamiliar with it it's like it's really easy to get hung up on certain details like you know i agreed to have this talk with her and she calls me up and then i start trying to tell the story as i understand it and she kept asking me questions like oh well how do you stay cool in slab city oh how do you get water and i'm sitting here like like okay i thought we were talking about a fucking trans man getting murdered brutally. I don't understand why you're trying to talk to me about how I stay cool in the summer. It's fucking just, you know, and at that moment it became very clear to me that even the most well-intentioned journalists are out of their depth when it comes to the situation. Not only that, not only like when it comes to addressing slab city in a way that isn't classist and um just incorrect um but also they they couldn't even hope to broach the subject of these queer spaces and these spaces for uh queer poc people of color and other marginalized folks there's just no way you would have to like hold their fucking hand through the whole thing and explain like every little thing. And like, who has time for that? Like I've spent countless hours on my streams trying to, you know, even just explain to people why it's important to respect pronouns. Like it's, it's incredible. So the learning curve, it's, it's not favorable to to representation of this case. And while 
I initially had no desire and really still have no desire to talk about this in the public eye. Um, I, I think it would be wrong not to, I think it would be irresponsible and, um, just it's immoral. Like, I think it would be immoral for me to see what's going on and be like, none of these people are going to be able to speak on this adequately. And I know a lot of people that were involved with this and I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of the interactions between these people and a lot of messages sent between people. And I know dates of when people, um, when, when people sent these messages and interacted with each other. I know dates of when certain things happened that, uh, that week of Poe being murdered. And it just seemed like if I don't share that information, that that's an injustice to, to Poe's family and, and people that cared about him and his partners and, you know, like, so, you know, there, there's a lot of people that have a lot of information and most of them have been like really cooperative and nice, um, with not just me, because, you know, as I said, I wasn't interested in building some kind of case around this. Um, but it, it kind of built itself. And, um, you know, like, like I said, out of respect for some of these people, I'm, I'm not going to name any names. If you know, you know, like if you're, I am going to name two names. And if you've been following the situation, I think you already know which names I'm going to name. Um, other than that, I'm going to try and come up with code names and, um, yeah, like I said, if you know, you know, but, um, I have a, a channel with a reasonably sized audience and I don't want to cause any more trauma to any of these people. And again, like I said, I was not in slabs when this murder happened and I did not live at Flamingo camp. I lived across town. Um, but there was a lot of social crossover between Flamingo camp and the library. Um, so that is why I, um, received as much information as I did. Okay. So at the time I had left slab city to head out on the road indefinitely. Poe was then residing at an ally camp called Flamingo camp established and run by my friend Vero. I just made that name up. I don't even know if that's a real name. If that's offensive, please let me know. Um, Flamingo was on its third consecutive season, officially established in 2018, which is a pretty good run for a camp in Slabs, um, especially considering that Slab City is damn near uninhabitable for half of the year with temperatures that reach 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius in the summertime with no uh, water or power infrastructure. Residents must have their water hauled in and stored in tanks, build or purchase their own plumbing systems, dig their own outhouses, build or inherit their own solar power systems and create their own amenities. It's a challenging way of life, but for many that live in slabs, it's their best option. Flamingo camp, as well as a handful of other camps, is a queer safe haven. Most of its crew is comprised of transgender folks and people of color, most of whom who are on some type of neurodivergent spectrum. In fact, nearly all of Slab City's residents could be considered neurodivergent, including me. <laughs> um, one of the town's many mottos is, we're all here because we're not all there. Now, making Slab City a perfect landing spot for those who fall through the cracks of society that is hostile to them. It does say something that Slab City has received a huge uptick in transgender population over the last decade. And um, I don't, I don't think I need to say why, 
um, because we all know that transgender people are murdered every day and that uh, there is a growing contempt for them in our society. Um, anyway, things had not been going well at Flamingo Camp over that winter season. There was much interpersonal drama, drug use, identity politics, disputes with neighboring camp East Jesus, among others, and even property damage and threats of violence between members. Even I had stopped going over there, and it used to be one of my favorite establishments to chill out, get a Bloody Mary on the mornings they were served at their rogue cocktail bar, party when they had events. It was a far cry from the previous season, which in retrospect I would call the glory days of big gay dance parties, drag shows, bar nights, raves, art, and music, even a small thrift store with colorful secondhand clothing and accessories. Things had taken a dark turn and everyone could feel it. Then there's a space there. I was gonna write some more shit. Um, so what, what I've parsed together is that around the time that I was uh, gearing up to head out of Slap City, there was a lot of um, a lot of interpersonal turmoil at Flamingo Camp, and um, some of the people had left, and there was a person that was residing there that was um, that was becoming more and more threatening and violent toward other members in that camp, which. Um, there's, there's a lot to it, um, and and I've I've combed through and listened to firsthand accounts from many many people, um, to the best of my outside understanding, is that uh, this person, who I'm only going to name, because um, okay. <laughs> We're not going to mince words here. <laughs> um, okay. This person um, is currently the main and only real suspect in this murder case. And um, she is currently at large and is wanted by Imperial County uh, for questioning. And of course she has disappeared. So we're, um, we actually don't know her legal name. Um, I'm aware of a couple of different aliases, but while she was in Slab City, she was going by the name Knives. And you know, this was for a reason because she carried knives and liked to throw them. and. Um, was also open carrying a gun in this peaceful, artsy, um, nice, you know, little collective. Of course, I'm, I'm not trying to infantilize it by saying these things, um, but that's how it always kind of was to me. I mean, I know, of course, there was always like interpersonal drama and um, one could say that there was a lot of, um, complaints from campmates about how uh, Vero had been handling interpersonal drama within that camp or not handling, I suppose. Um, and like I said, they are one of my good friends. So um, learning, learning more about how these interpersonal situations were handled and, and or not handled, um, definitely gave me a different perspective on how how Vero conducted themselves in their space um, and you know I yeah I learned a lot <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean that I, I don't think that they are responsible for what happened because nobody could know just how bad it was going to get they had been spoken to about um, knives in the past and her um, her behavior, but not, I don't think adequately. And to be 
perfectly frank, I think that a lot of people that, that were involved with this camp were also um, to blame for how they had handled these situations too. Instead of addressing these concerns and issues among each other as a collective, they would just go and run and, and tell Vero and be like, hey, it's your camp, clean this up, fix it. And um, there, there's a lot of problems within queer POC collective spaces. And one of those big problems is identity politics. Now, this particular case has been spun many ways by many different people. People from the outside looking in are like, oh, another trans person dead, whoop de fucking do Oh, and it was a trans person that did it. What are pronouns? Oh, you know, um, or whatever. This is, this is trans on trans crime or some shit like that. Um, and whatever. And then from the inside, nobody wants to actually fucking talk about it because they're afraid of being called out for being anti this or anti that. Um, and in my opinion, if people are trying to make this out to be some kind of identity politics circle jerk, then they're either hiding something or they're uncomfortable with actually looking at the situation and how it was handled without the lens of, of, um, of trauma and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Without a lens of, I guess, uh, yeah, without a political lens or whatever. It's like, it's, it's like, if you think that a person, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So, <laughs> Yeah, one of, the, one of the fucking challenges of being in a queer space that is also a safe space for POC is that people are scared to call out problematic behavior when it's being done by people that are a little more marginalized than others because they don't want to be seen as anti-black or anti-trans or whatever. Um, so a lot of people have tried to like spin it that way. And in my opinion, if you're unwilling to look at the behavior of, um, for example, a black person or an indigenous person, if you're unwilling to look at their behavior because they are a marginalized person, then that is racism. That's not reverse racism. That's just straight up racism. I'm sorry, but it is, okay? If, if you're unwilling to identify what's going on because of the color of somebody's skin, that is racism. Um, so I'm gonna move on now. Um, okay, this is kind of blah, 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 blah. I'm uh, gonna go over, kind of just skipping around in here before Anyway, so I had met Poe a handful of times. He was typically very quiet and shy when I encountered him. At a transgender support group meeting, the first time I met him, he had tearfully expressed that he was actively suicidal and begged for help of any kind. There was much support, um, you know, everybody kind of just stopped the support group and was just like, like, hey buddy like what can we do for you uh you know and um there's much support and he left the group meeting in a seemingly better mood with many myself included telling them telling him that if he needed any help to not hesitate to reach out another time i encountered him was when i was invited to flamingo camp by vero who was trying to help me uh, get summer help at the library since they knew I was planning on leaving and hadn't yet found someone to stay and maintain the library in my absence. Honestly, I had gotten to a point where I was just gonna like 
board it up and rehome my kitties and um, just leave because, you know, I was over it. I needed to do something else. Um, but they had heard that I was not trying to abandon the space. I, I didn't want to. I had spent so many years building it up. Um, Vero talked up a number of their campmates, introduced me to a number of folks. I think there was like maybe eight or so people actually staying there at the time. Um, they talked up a number of their campmates for the purpose of allowing me to select one or more of them to move to my camp. Now, Vero is my friend and I care for them but this particular interaction rubbed me the wrong way. They were acting as though these human beings were commodities to be traded and I hadn't asked for the offer. Um, I was uncomfortable with the encounter and I, but I sat and listened politely conversing with people as they bustled through. Vero invited Poe to sit with us and explained to me that Poe was a good one, though they would serve more as a body as they continued to speak, I could see that Vero's choice of words had wounded Poe very deeply, who waited for a turn to speak and then asserted quietly but firmly, I'm more than just a body. I left Flamingo camp with a bad taste in my mouth that day. I did not acquire any new campmates. I have a suspicion that Vero was trying to thin the herd to be more manageable and to move out camp members who did not get along with others in an attempt to avoid future problems, which is well-intentioned um, in the fact that there was a lot of tension between campmates and, um, and Vero was trying to move people out for their safety, but they didn't really know how to do that at the time, it seems. And um, after, Around that time, um, up until I left and a little after I left, um, the situation with Knives became much worse. Uh, she became very abusive. She was texting people um, about, here, let's pull this up. I'm not gonna show you the actual texts here. I'm just gonna have them pulled up on the computer so I can read them. Um, let's, cause, cause now we're at that part where we're, we're getting there. Okay. Um, let's see. So Knives was also going by Lurquisha. Um, and let me let me be clear about Knives. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush on this. So Knives is a trans woman or identified as a trans woman at this time. You know, things change. Um, I don't know her personally, but I will refer to her during the duration of the stream and until, you know, until told otherwise, uh, she is a she, a woman, a trans woman, a black trans woman. But um, if you didn't know this and you just like saw her on the street, um, she really does not present in um, a socially feminine way at all. Um, so like, I'm gonna be real, like if you saw her on the street, you would call her by different pronouns, okay? And you know, it is what it is. Um, you, you don't, there's a disclaimer, I'm also a trans person. Um, you do not owe it to anybody to present in any particular way to be a valid person or for your pronouns to be valid or, or for your identity to be valid, okay? You can have a beard and be a she, totally cool, totally fine, it's all good. Um, but in the interest of, of information and transparency, sometimes you need to talk about stuff that is triggering. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes you need to actually just name things. You can't just beat around the bush. You can't dance around shit. It's important. Like, like if, if you were searching for me in a crowd you wouldn't dance around it. You'd be like, yeah, it's that um, that person with one leg and big tits. Like, okay, that will help them to find me. Like, it's not the greatest way to refer to me in any way whatsoever, but to somebody who doesn't know me, that's 
I mean, you could tell them the color of my shirt and that I have short hair, but like, you know, you're going to want to talk about the most identifying features, which obviously sometimes is painful for, for people. So Knives is a trans woman, but if you didn't know that, there's not really any visual cues to tell you that. Um, you know, <laughs> that's the reality. Um, so around uh, May, oh, May 7th, she started, ex uh, she started messaging another, um, another person who I'm going to call uh, Sean. Um, there's a message to Sean here from May 7th that says, I'm tired of being cornered into abusive situation after another. And Sean says, you must be exhausted. And Knives says, I was, I kind of was able to keep it together because the situation is in a lot of ways only a severe form of already existing and being trans, but it's like three years of people obsessing over me. And no matter how much abuse you've already gone through or how tough you are inside, everyone has a breaking point and people inside of queer communities getting to pr predate on me is mine. I'm fucking over it. Stalking a homeless trans woman to death and not telling her why or letting her be accountable isn't justice. And then, of course, Sean is like, who is doing that? And then um, Knives goes on to recount um, a situation that by all other accounts within the camp didn't happen. And she had built this narrative um, that she was being gang stalked and that people were out to get her because she is black and trans. Um, and she was in a camp run by and for trans people and she continued this narrative. Um, I'm not gonna read this verbatim because it's, basically she says that a group of kids from my camp snuck into my trailer and groped my genitals and other parts of my body while saying really wretched things about rape and pedophilia. I have sleep paralysis pretty often, so I was aware of being touched and there were people in my room, but I couldn't really move or do anything. Often I don't remember these things, but I've caught several people doing it because, since I became the target of a stalking campaign that spread like wildfire because of the heinous nature of the accusations and social prejudices against my demographics. Now, if you put that in, in plain English, basically she's saying that she's being gang stalked solely for the reason that she's black and trans, which, you know, it being, being black and trans, yes, absolutely. There, there is constant threat of violence, of course. Like even just appearing in public is dangerous. Um, but if you've ever known anybody with schizotypal tendencies, um, this is a common theme among people where they will create an elaborate narrative um, where there's people after them. And this is not the only message I've seen uh, from her to other people about this sleep paralysis situation. Um, if any of you in chat have, um, have ever been in sleep paralysis, what a lot of people describe often is that they wake up and they become aware of a presence in their room and they can't do anything. They can't move. It's very, very scary. Um, it sounds like she's, she's having an episode and I'm not basing it just off of this. Um, so anyway, on May 6th, she messaged another person saying, um, okay, hold on, let me preface this. Okay, so Poe was found on May 11th, riddled with stab wounds, as I said. Um, when I spoke to the investigators who were on the case, um, they said that he would have had to have been killed on approximately approximately May 5th or 
you know, it, like within four days or so uh, of being found. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So yeah, like at least four days before, um, before he'd been found. He was missing on the 5th. Um, that's when people started putting out, um, putting out like, hey, our campmate is missing. Um, and I, I have since, actually just this morning, I spoke to um, one of the last people to interact with him, actually. Um, so on the 6th, she texted another person saying, dude, I'm going to fucking die out here. I ain't got money for gas and food. My fucking tires all jacked. I think the situation got handled really badly and I got fucked over, but I hope they don't burn your camp down. I didn't make that shit up and I can't have people think they can straight up violate my body that way. And I just let it rock. Let's see. So there was an ongoing situation at Flamingo Camp um, where she was becoming more and more paranoid. And um, at a certain point, I believe it was the fifth, when Vero decided that enough was enough, that they were going to ask everyone to just leave the camp and get the van out of there. And, um, and then after the camp was cleared, then, you know, everybody would be safe from Knives' increasingly violent behavior. Um, but according to uh, a few sources, um, Poe was in, in the middle of his own episode. And I'm not going to speak on his interpersonal relationships like I know shit about him because, like I said, I had only interacted with him a couple of times. <clears throat> All I know is what other people have shown me of conversations that were had and firsthand information. Um, so, oh, here's another text from... So she was just texting all these different people on May 6th and 7th. Um, she got her to her car towed out of the sand on... Now, I was talking to the person who um, helped get her towed out earlier, like literally right before the stream, and they do remember pulling her out, but um, we couldn't... They couldn't um, track down actual, like, texts from that day, but... Let's see... I believe that she was pulled out of the sand up past drop seven, um, a little ways on the seventh, I think. Um, and on the seventh, she was also messaging another person here. It says, I can't tell you where I am. Whenever I do, people come and try to hurt me and then no one believes me. Not you, but pretty much everyone else. And this other person says, I understand I don't need to know where you are, but it would help to know where you'd like to be in the future. And she said, somewhere safe. I just, I can't just camp or squat. I can't be anywhere public. It's called gang stalking. So this is from Vero messaging one of their campmates um, on the 5th and saying, I already told everyone to leave, but I can't get a hold of, I'm gonna call them um, Lenny, sorry, <laughs> Lenny. Uh, I already told everyone, but I can't get a hold of Lenny. If you see um, fucking uh, shit, What's a good name? Uh, if you see Wolf, we're going to call them Wolf. I think they might like that one. If you see Wolf or Lenny, could they call me from your phone? And this person that they're talking to says, yeah, I can do that if I find them. 
And then Vero says, so what do you think of this? I'm thinking if I don't, um, in parentheses, make everyone leave, she could do something bad to the camp maybe, or I guess if I don't make her leave, she could do something bad to the camp maybe, she's pretty pissed off at me. Um, and then this other person says, I don't feel like she would do something to harm the space, but honestly, who knows? I've never dealt with something like this. This is kind of complicated in like, she would probably come back around to see if, and then the screenshot kind of fades away. Um, <clears throat> and then there's a picture here of her. Um, she wrote this, uh, whoops. She wrote this on the back of Oh, this person's vehicle who um, who was leaving that camp also because they had been in increasingly volatile confrontations with knives. Um, let's see. Okay, I see. <clears throat> and then there was a fundraiser to get the van out, that van which was defaced, and um, I believe the windshield was smashed by knives with a bat. And that is that is a confirmed thing. That happened. Um, so there was a fundraiser, um, I think organized by Vero here, and they were trying to get um, some money so that this other person could get their van in running condition and leave to a different camp where they felt safer. Okay. Let's see. Oh, and this is from a few days before then. Uh, Knives was saying, so this is going to sound crazy, but I hope you believe me because right now I just want to beat someone up with a bat. A few weeks ago, I woke up to Wolf standing over me in my room talking about molesting children. I pulled my gun because every part of what they were doing was sick and disgusting. B, I was sexually abused throughout my childhood. And C, I was barely awake and struggled really badly with sleep paralysis. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna dissect this. Like, I, I, know, I know Wolf. <laughs> Uh, to call some, like, to say and admit that you're literally sleeping and in sleeping sleep paralysis when a person enters your room and you can't do anything about it, like, that, that doesn't sound like that really happened. Um, and, like, to what end would somebody just walk into somebody's room where they're sleeping and start talking about molesting children? Like, that, that... That doesn't add up. Nothing about that sounds like a real situation. Um, so, and this was a theme, like the this this was a thing um, where she would be. Um, this is anecdotal. I've I've heard a couple of anecdotes from a couple of people who were there at the time <clears throat> that um, that she would literally like they. They would be just chilling and she would accuse people of like kicking her or like touching her without her consent um, when she wasn't looking like weird stuff like that, um, which just it sounds not real to me. Um, and I, I have talked to a number of like people who struggle with um, schizophrenia. And that's like, that's actually a classic, like hearing people talking about you and then like going and realizing that literally nobody's even like doing anything concerning you or they're not even like in the same room together, you know, that kind of thing that, that happens and it can feel very real. Um, so maybe to her, it felt like a real thing that was happening. Um, and then she goes on to say, on top of all this, the camp itself is like actually disgusting and overrunning with flies to the point even none of the people who trashed it can hang out anymore. They just use the space to cook. I know you love everyone and want to hold space for queers, but they're constantly doing vile shit and running the camp in the ground. Now, when I spoke to Vero about this situation, what they said to me was that um, 
Knives actually was trashing the space. Um, at one point, she like threw out all of the furniture and just upended the common area. And it, it yeah, it was bad. Um, I don't have any screenshots of this, so I'm just going off of what I remember. Um, so then Vero says, so now you're writing shit on their van, just leave them alone. I'm so sick of hearing about shit. And Knives says, okay. And Vero says, no, please head out. This is too much. You smashed their van with a baseball bat. I want to be your friend, but this is fucked up. Now they can't get even get out of slabs because of you. And uh, of course, Knives is trying to justify why they did these shitty behaviors toward people. Um, and it's, it's kind of cut off. But, um, and then another person <clears throat> who was her friend or knew her, uh, before she ever came to the space, um, was speaking to Vero about the situation. Hold on. Let me see. Um, this other person is talking to Vero saying, you did the right thing, just so you know, about um, making people leave and telling knives to go. And this was May 14th. So this was after all of these details of Poe's murder came out. Um, they said, I didn't know she was going to camp or else I'd have warned you. She needs to get help and that's not your responsibility. And Vero says, God damn it, thank you. She's messaging me all this stuff right now, how she's gonna warn everyone she knows about the camp. She said she's gonna tell all the queer POC she knows to spread the word. And I'm like, what the fuck is even going on? Because if you know Vero, you know that they're definitely somebody that defends trans folks and people of color, et cetera. Um, this is like what I was talking about earlier where like, being afraid to confront and speak openly about identity politics only creates a safe space for fucking psychos. Get mad at me. Go ahead. It's true. Fucking sociopaths know how to speak that language better than most folks. They, they know which buzzwords to say to trigger people into compliance they know how to present themselves in a way that makes them look like the victim in all situations. It's, it's a fucking candy store for narcissists. I'm just being real. Like, of course it's important to recognize how society is stacked against certain people. Of course it's important to elevate voices that otherwise wouldn't have a chance to be heard and, and to be humble as a white person in spaces that are not for you, of course. Um, if you're, I'm gonna take a hit on this babe. Of course it's important. Um, but if it's getting in the way of addressing things important, then there's something wrong. There's a disconnect. And it allows people that hurt other people to hide. So this person messaging Vero says, and I say this as her friend of 10 years. Oh, where is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh, I didn't actually organize these. Um, And I think actually I missed a, I didn't get one of the screenshots, but this person says that my first thought, honestly, after hearing about the murder, that it was knives. I didn't know Legion had been murdered at the time. Um, and Vero says, there's maybe a serial killer in Slavs, but knives is for sure a suspect in Legion's death. They're looking for her. I heard a lot of stuff and a lot of people think she did this. Tried to look up time frames. Um, she threatened a lot of people's lives before she left slabs and he goes missing one day before she left slabs. 
a lot more makes sense as to why she's a suspect. I still think it's more likely a serial killer. At this time, um, in late May, there were still details coming out. And of course, nobody wants to point fingers at the person who has made it their entire identity about being a persecuted black trans woman. Like, <laughs> so that's a really, it's a really convenient way for this person to deflect um, any accountability. And I will say with absolute confidence, confidence, with absolute confidence after seeing so many correspondences that she is in fact a narcissist. And that's a classic narcissist move to create a narrative to deflect accountability. Um, so Vero was kicking everyone out, asking a couple of folks to watch the camp. After Knives leaves, people can start coming back. And then this person responds, yeah, we've been trying to move the van over to the handlebar, but the motherfucker won't start. We need people to work on it. So handlebar burned down. So, you know, there's there's no danger to um, talking about the handlebar, but because um, it doesn't exist anymore. But um, yeah, everybody moved over to the handlebar because it is another trans-friendly um, space. And, you know, everybody was kind of just working the bar there. Um, and actually, uh, this, this morning, I spoke to another person who was at the handlebar. I'm going to call them, um, I'm going to call them Star. I'm going to call them Star. All right, Star says, so like I was living at the handlebar when Poe came to, to me talking about wanting to kill himself. And I told him I couldn't hold him down and make him not do anything, but that I thought he would be missed. He kept saying stuff like, I already told my family and I already made up my mind and everyone was on board, which felt super eerie to me. And afterwards I began to realize that they were talking about, um, I'm gonna call them Sydney and Knives. Um, Sydney at the time was Poe's um, partner actively or recently, um, they were going through some type of breakup, which, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I know the nuances of that either. Um, and Sydney and Poe were also involved with knives romantically in some capacity at some time. Um, I began to realize they were talking about Sydney and knives because those were the only two people they were close to after being kicked out of Flamingo. Paul was telling me when he said all that, that he really needed to breathe. And I told him to just go to the hot spring and soak and try to just think about what he really wanted for himself and try to calmly breathe. He left then. And I remember my stomach clenching like it does when I feel like something fucked is about to happen, which made me nervous, but I figured he'd be okay just walking down there and back. Knives uh, came to the handlebar not even 15 minutes later asking where Poe was. And I lied and said that I didn't know. Um, I'm going to call him Roy. Roy decided to pipe up and say, oh, I thought he was going to the hot springs. And Knives was like, thanks, and left. And the same feeling, I got the same feeling in my stomach that I get when a big dog is about to attack someone. It came on, but I still thought against my better judgment because I knew they were close at some point. Two days after all this, though, she came to the handlebar again asking for help to get her car out of the sugar sand by the canal. Nobody wanted to though, so I think she got, um, I'm gonna call them Jeff. I think she got Jeff or, or to help or someone else. And I actually spoke to Jeff this morning. Um, Sydney would act really cold while the investigation was going on and came back to slabs a very aggressive and straight up violent person with um, Willow. Now I'm gonna call her, um, I'm not going to call her Willow. That's my brother's wife. Um, I'm going to call her um, 
I'm like, I'm gonna call her uh, Kitty. Uh, and straight up violent person with Kitty, and I, I'm not gonna call her Kitty either. I know a Kitty, fuck, who else? What's, what's a good nickname here? Um, Jesse, I'm just gonna say Jesse. It's a normal, whatever. Um, straight up violent person with Jesse, and I talked to Sydney a lot during all of this, and whenever I asked them how they were coping with Poe's death, their demeanor would just go cold and they'd get defensive, even though what I was asking implied no assumptions or accusations at all. They also said that he wasn't their problem anymore after the fact, and it felt like I was sitting next to someone who didn't have any form of life at the slightest. So, full disclosure, Sydney was and may still be another one of the main suspects. Um, nothing that I've looked at or anything else presented has like backed any of that up, but it is not unlikely that they may have been in some capacity like around during this time. I do not know, I have not spoken to them. Um, I do know for a fact that when Knives was um, pulled out of the sugar sand, it was not by Jeff, it was by another party because Jeff, the usual tow person, came out and saw where the, the car was stuck along the canal just uh, just past drop seven, to the best of my understanding. I could be wrong, and I'm going to follow up on this information after the stream, so if there's anything left unaddressed, this is not the only time I'm going to talk about this, I'm sure. Um, so Jeff called in another friend, and that friend ended up pulling knives out of the sugar sand at the canal. Um, and when she was pulled out of the canal, she was alone. And um, to the best of my understanding, she was alone during this and she fled alone. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think, until more information comes to light that would implicate Sydney's involvement with this. Um, and if you're watching, uh, Sydney, I'm using a qu code name, I'm sure you know. Um, if you have any information that could help with this investigation, please, please help me. Um, and not just me, it's not about me. This isn't about me. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is because nobody else is. And like I explained in the beginning, the journalists that are trying to report on this are doing a shitty job and they're incapable of doing it properly. Um, but we need awareness. We need people to know that this happened and we need justice for Poe. So I'm not trying to fucking beat off on being a martyr here, but I am definitely putting myself on the line for this and it's, I'm not gaining anything from this. Um, uh, I just, I just want there to be some headway in this fucking case because it's not fair. It's not fair to a lot of people to, to fucking beat around the bush. And I know that some of you have information that you are not sharing. I know. I actually know a lot more than I'm talking about on the stream as well. Um, and I'm not going to say it yet until more things come to light. And I'm, like I said, not trying to name names, not trying to put anybody on blast, um, except for, of course, knives. Um, and let's take a look at her picture. Let's take a little looky look. Hold on one minute. All right. Now, I know you all have a lot of questions, and I'm not here to dissect anybody's motives or, like, why they will or will not speak about this, but, um, let's see. Okay, this is Knives. She is currently wanted for questioning by Imperial County Sheriff's Office. Um, and let me just, uh, that's her vehicle, let me just talk about what happened with her. Um, and yeah, feel free to screen snap. I will share 
another um, a screenshot on my on my uh, Facebook, etc., Instagram, whatever. I will be putting it out again. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But that's her. Um, so anyway. Vero was clearing out the camp around, you know, early May. And Poe went missing on the 5th through to the 11th when his body was found. Um, let me just see... Um, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. Um, and like I said, I'm not the fucking smartest person in the whole goddamn world. And I'm only so equipped to deal with this shit, but it's, you know, anyway. Um, okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I think he went missing on the sixth actually, or, um, nope. This is a message from the sixth from another person saying, Poe never left today, stalking around all angry. Sydney was at Handlebar. I talked to two others a bit and touched bases with camp and had the trailer pointed out. I'm going to attempt to talk to him and establish what is wanted. So I went to Flamingo and tried to get someone to address Poe with me to protect my reputation. No takers. Um, Star seems like they have some understanding with them that they will leave on the 10th, which is not what is welcome. I don't know. Is it okay if they secure their things and remove their bodies? Like, like leave the camp, I guess. That's just a weird fucking way to put it. But there's, <laughs> yeah. Um. So then this other person responds, is Star staying there? I said they could get their things only if another person is with them. If you want to be that person, I'm okay with it. I mostly just don't want Sydney there. Poe, I'm honestly heartbroken about. Also, do you know if Knives is still there? So around this time, another person says, Legion was having a big breakdown, and it was the only time we really interacted ever. Said he didn't know what reality was, never really has, had a brain injury, and gets confused. Didn't remember where the van was parked, thought it was still at Flamingo, even though it apparently was at Skate Park. We talked for a bit, I gave him food, and he told me he was going back over to his safe space and left. Apparently his partner saw him after that. Um, I thought I saw him walking out toward the canal the day that they drove up to ask. I can't remember the exact dates of anything. Um, so yeah, that was on the 6th when, okay, it was on the 6th then. It was on the 6th when Poe was having his kind of meltdown and Vero was trying to clear out the camp, um, and... Poe showed up at the handlebar, etc. Um, this is another account from a different person about um, knives from before she ever came to uh, Slab City. And there's, you're gonna have to be patient with me because it's all like jumbled up and I'm on a computer that I'm not familiar with. Um, so this person says, even when the house I lived in with her knives was intentionally all black, she still caused fights and discord through the house. It was October and November of last year and she drove out five black people because most of us were AFAB and she accused us all of trans misogyny. Then the house imploded and was refilled with all trans women, mostly black and brown. And she got worse after that, stole somebody's phone and posted shit to her account threw axes into, let me just uh, find the next, threw axes into, um, 
trying to where is the other one there's a second part to that um So she was actually staying at a house that was run by um, one of the last people that she had interacted with. And I did not actually know this until earlier today. Um, this person had been hiding this information from me. So this other person who um, I'm looking at screenshots of um, ran this house and even after it was refilled with all trans women, mostly black and brown. She got worse after that. Stole a phone, was throwing uh, axes into walls. And um, the, the next part, I already read it, but I can't, I can't find it in here right now. Um, she actually threw a person down the stairs, um, which is obviously not okay. Um, Another message that she sent to Sean says, I can't keep going through these cycles of abuse. I get hurt. Queers get hurt. Um, that's sketchy as fuck. That was on the 7th, May 7th. Also on May 7th, um, there's another interaction between a couple of people. I guess she left. She's a mess and stranded in the desert now. I feel like such a shitty person. If Poe is there, then just let it be for now. It's not Sydney. I don't think Poe would leave the camp. Both are gone as far as I know. Feel like you're getting guilt tripped. Um, they say she is still in camp. I'll attempt to speak to her in daylight. Um, and then, yeah, she dipped after that. On, okay, on the 8th, would be when she contacted Jeff for a tow from the canal. Another person is messaging Vero asking, do you know anyone who tows cars out of the sand for people? In slabs, I mean, or like down the canal road. And Vero sends them um, Jeff's number and uh, I'm just gonna call her Sue, Sue's number. And then they said, thank you. If Jeff doesn't get back, I might ask for Sue's number two. Okay, sounds good. Jeff showed up, thanks. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah, and like I said, Jeff was the person I was talking to earlier today. And they said that they did actually go out to where Knives was stranded in, in the sand. And like I said earlier, saw that they could not pull the vehicle out of the sand and called for backup and that Knives was alone. And they also said that um, they could, if, if they drove back down the canal, they could point out the specific spot um, where she was, or perhaps um, they will be able to pull up the map and um, find it for me or for us or for anybody, literally like, if there's a fucking professional, queer, um, oriented, private investigator in my audience right now, please, I'm begging you, <laughs> please, please take over. I don't, I don't, I really honestly don't want to do this. Um, it's, it's been a lot of stress. I've been fucking like chewing my nails all fucking morning. Um, I've lost friends over this. Um, and it sucks. It really does suck. Um, but as I said earlier, I can't in good conscience just pretend that this isn't an outstanding ongoing thing with this person at large. Um, there is mountains of correspondences between, between Knives and these other people who were involved with the camp. On this day, she was flipping out and, okay, so anyway, um, so she ended up fleeing slabs. She messaged, okay, she messaged somebody, the dude, I'm gonna fucking die out here. And this was sent on May 6th, 2021 at 11.30 p.m. Oh, 
here's um here's some correspondence from May 5th where she is speaking to um to somebody else um it says she says uh whoever stole my wallet meaning Poe probably went missing the same time my phone did yeah this shit is ridiculous I think the girls will put him up to it when their stuff went missing. I was up till like five and didn't hear anybody rolling. So in this text, she is, um, she seems to think that Poe stole her wallet and phone. Um, on May 7th, she messaged shopping. Maybe the only way no one else gets hurt is if I waste away out in the middle of nowhere. I don't want to be a monster. So I believe that she fled Slab City on the 7th or 8th. She was... Um, Sean purchased her a hotel room um, just past the, the California state border. Uh, I believe in Nevada. Could be wrong. If I'm wrong, then, you know, I believe it was in Nevada. I think she drove straight through. Um, had Sean purchase her a hotel room used, um, as far as I understand it, a fake ID with the name um, Sonia Renault on it and um, stayed there and then headed up uh, north to Jackson County um, to meet Sean. And Sean was, um, like, like all of us, didn't know the full spectrum of the situation and was like, oh, of course I'll help you. You're, you're clearly distressed. You're, you're a marginalized person and you've been through so much. And, you know, how can I help as any, you know, good white ally would do. Um, and they helped her to um, have places to camp and work. And at a, after a few days, um, she was becoming um, like verbally abusive and sketchy. I'm not entirely sure what the uh, specifics of the situation were, but it culminated in um, Sean becoming uncomfortable with having her around and um, as fate would have it, uh, around that time is when I arrived in Jackson County. And this is how I became entangled in this situation. Um, None of us had the details of, of any of this. I had just spent like a week foodling about the Sierras, um, just, you know, doing bush stuff as I do um, after leaving slabs. And then of course this whole situation was unfolding and I was very content to be sitting in the woods where there was no phone reception because I was like, this, this ain't my circus, this ain't my problem. I just left slabs with the intention of like, having me time. Um, so I went up to, um, I went up to Southern Oregon and spent some time with uh, my other friend who was working up there. And, you know, we had a nice, uh, I think it was like a week or two just chilling out. And I was about to, I was actually waiting on, um, some medical equipment to arrive. And um, it didn't. So I was like, well, fuck, I better continue on my journey and uh, post up somewhere else for a little while um, because, you know, I need that, need that equipment and uh, I don't want to keep sticking around in fucking bum Southern Oregon. Um, but on my way out, I remembered that Sean happened to be in the same area. So I was like, well, maybe, um, 
maybe I can make contact and see if they want to chill because, you know, that'd be cool. And it turned out that they were actually staying at a campground um, right down the road from where I had been visiting my other friend. Uh, so, of course, I'm like, yo, sick, let's fucking hang out. Uh, so we did. And we hung out for a few days camping out at that campground. It was, um, it was fun. We just, you know, normal camping stuff. And they actually um, hooked me up with some work. And that was awesome. And um, introduced me to their employer. And I did some farm work or, you know, like field work, yard work, um, etc. It was very kind of them to... Um, to, to hook me up with that. And, and over those days, more information um, surfaced about Poe and about Knives um, potentially being involved. And Sean confided in me and said, um, you know, I actually was the one who bought her a hotel room and um, helped her get out. And they expressed having a lot of guilt about that, especially as more pieces fell into place. And it became pretty obvious that um, that Knives had some type of involvement in this situation. Um, so Sean started becoming afraid and thinking like, oh my God, um, I brought her up here I helped her leave slabs and I showed her my campsites I showed her my place of occupation I introduced her to my friends and uh, my employer um, what the fuck do I do she's like she's not stable she's not okay um, and she was acting very erratically and threatening. Um, so oh wow, I'm just noticing um, this is unrelated um, that the date that um, Knives Wanted poster uh, was published is actually my birthday. <laughs> Fuck. Um, anyway, uh, so Sean was, of course, um, sketched out by this, uh, as anyone would be like, holy shit, like, this person probably is running from a murder, and they know everywhere that I am. Um, and that's, that's sketch. And, well, she ended up posting up at a, um, a property up there uh, in Wolf Creek, which is another queer collective that is oriented toward people of color. It was at one point um, like land for gay men and they have since opened it up to people of all genders and identities, which I think is really rad. But um, it's another situation like with Flamingo Camp where identity politics were preventing people from having honest conversations with each other. Um, so this allowed Knives to hide out on this property for the entire duration of my lingering in uh, Jackson County. And I did linger in Jackson County for another um, couple of weeks because of this situation. Um, I was kind of serving as um, just security for Sean in case Knives did try to find them. Um, and Sean and I were both on the phone with uh, investigator Kakatian and um, the there's another investigator or detective that I can't remember the name of. I've, I just see it like on this wanted poster here. Um, but we were in direct contact with um, the police department hounding them like, please, look at this case and um, giving them as much information as we could because at that point it was clear that there was a person running from a crime and they were hiding out. And they were hiding out in 
the next county. And, you know, I say this, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll put my reputation on the line, but I fully believe that Knives murdered Poe. 100%. And a lot of people that were friends with her don't want to look at that. They don't want, they don't want to address it because in order to look at that, they're going to have to address certain things and behaviors of their own. And they're going to have to be honest with themselves um, about what role they played in enabling this person to abuse other people. Even if she didn't murder Poe, she was still an abusive person. And no amount, like, it doesn't matter if you're a fucking marginalized person. That is never an excuse to abuse people and be rude to people and be mean to people and gaslight people which is, that's not up for debate. You could debate that Knives maybe didn't murder Poe, but you can't debate that she was abusive to everyone around her. That's, it's a fact, it's a known fact. And she caused trouble in every space that she occupied. No amount of personal trauma or, or social injustice makes that okay. All right. So I've been going on for about an hour and 30 minutes. Um, as I said before, disclaimer, again, it bears repeating. I am not a journalist. I am not being paid to do this. I have no personal stake in this other than it's affected a lot of my friends and my community and nobody else is stepping up to address this and I'm fucking sick of it. So that's why we're here. Um, and at this point, oh. Hmm. I haven't told you everything that I know um, but suffice it to say, um, after Knives was at this, uh, collective space in Wolf Creek, she fled again and was seen, and this is, this is hearsay, I don't know, um, if this is a fact, but she was reported to be in Portland, but then she disappeared again. And um, there were some reports that she was seen in New York months after that. I do not know if that's true. Uh, but she is actively hiding and actively running. And she is trying to spin a narrative that it is because everyone's out to get her because she's black and trans. That's stupid. I, I'm sorry, but it's fucking stupid. Like, what, in what world is a group of people going to get together to like follow this one person around the country just because they're black and trans? And then like never being able to like see who they are or like identify their faces? Like that's, that's, it's, it's fantasy, it's la la land, it's bullshit. Um, like, who the fuck has time in their life to just like hide in a bush and follow somebody around because you don't like what they are? Like, if there were people out there that had an interest in like killing her because she was black and trans, then they would just get a posse together and fucking do it. Lynch mobs happen. <laughs> like, and it, it does happen. It, you know, there, there's tons, like I said, tons of people, um, black folks, trans folks, trans black folks, they, they get murdered every fucking year. Um, every day, even. And, you know, I'm not arguing against that. But the whole idea of like a group of people 
like following somebody around the country just to like tap their shoulder when they're hanging out in a common area at a queer collective camp or like to like whisper shit to them from the bushes like that's insane like you don't that's insane like come on that's that's fucking nonsense you know that's nonsense that's it's simply not happening um nobody has that kind of time or energy or resources and if they did they wouldn't spend it on like petty shit like fucking i don't know like trying to spread rumors about people like that's that's it's absolutely stupid um Oh, I want to see what this, uh... Ooh, Lucera Dutton. I would wonder. Let's see. Oh, let's see. I want to see this deleted message, too. Cool. So there's been people in here... Okay, there was just the one person. Honestly? Damn, I thought people were entitled to a fair trial. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that was nice, to be perfectly honest. Um, let's see what else they said. Hey... What else did you say, Lucera? Because Knives' um, other alias is Lucretia. Um, so if anybody wants to look into that uh, Lucera Dutton account, I don't know. Um, that's that's interesting. I actually, I actually think that's um, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. That would be her brand. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, also, I'm not here to fucking circle jerk about identity politics, like I said, but if you must know, Poe was also another marginalized person. Aside from being trans, he was also indigenous. Um, one could argue that he was white passing, but... At this point, we're just fucking splitting hairs. Um, and regardless of who who these people are, like what their identity is, if you reduce it down to simple things, one person killed another person. Um, and Lucretia, AKA Knives, AKA Sonia Renault, um, if you are watching right now, uh, yeah, people are entitled to a fair trial in court. So why don't you show up for yours? Because you are wanted. They do want to talk to you. And you have been hiding. So if you're innocent, of course you're entitled to a um, to your day in court. So, yeah, show up for it. Go back to Imperial County and talk to the Sheriff's County. Talk to the fucking Sheriff's Department. And if you're going to say, oh, well... Cops are the natural mortal enemy of black people, and that would be a death sentence, and blah, 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 blah. Well, like, you're not, you're not in the street. You're not being apprehended in the street. And yes, fuck cops, for sure. Um, but there's a, there's a, um, And if you want to prove your innocence, then that's the route you would go. You don't have to like walk up to a police officer in the street and be like, me, a black trans woman have something to say to you. Like, yeah, of course that would be dangerous. But you can give them a call. They can't shoot you over the phone. Fucking have, have some courage, you know, quit, quit running. Everybody knows, everybody knows. And it's only a matter of time before the truth comes out. Yes, I am talking to you. And I would like to address all the other people who are part of her friend group. Um, a handful of them are friends of mine. I ask you to look into yourself, honestly, outside of ideas of racial prejudice and actual 
social racial prejudice and the social constructs, etc. This is not about identity politics. This is about one person murdering another person. You need to be honest with yourself. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm looking over this here and um, seeing if there's anything I missed. Laquisha. Jack Saunders says, I wouldn't taunt a murder on the loose. Literally, when I was up in Jackson County and she was the county over in Wolf Creek, she was posted up on the land in an area that she, um, and I, I wish I had the screenshots from this because I saw the notes from, um, from the group meetings at Wolf Creek while she was there. Um, she had taken over a space, which was a vantage point. So she could see who was coming in and out of the land. And she claimed it as a black trans only space. And she was the only person on the land at the time that was both black and trans, I believe. Um, I, I would be able to confirm that. I'm just saying I believe because I don't have the notes directly in front of me right now. Um, but uh, she was posted up there. And again, she was still open carrying a gun uh, on the land. People were fucking very uncomfortable with her presence there. She was being threatening. Um, and I actually uh, had spoken to um, law enforcement. I, I hadn't given details of location at that point, but at a certain point, I was willing to personally walk onto the land and make face-to-face -face contact with knives, which of course would have been detrimental to my well-being with her carrying a fucking pistol and being known as uh, somebody that likes to stab shit and put axes and shit. But like, I was just fucking sick of it. I was so sick of all this fucking tiptoeing around and just wanted to like, if I could just approach her and walk right up and be like, Hey, so, um, can we talk? <laughs> and, um, of course she fled before that ever became a possibility. I was speaking to, uh, a number of the elders at that time who were involved with that space at Wolf Creek. And we were kind of just like hashing out how to handle the situation. Um, so yeah, that never happened, um, but I was willing to. So if you think it's um, maybe stupid to um, directly address a person that is currently running from the law on suspected murder charges, then yeah, I mean, I guess so. But um, you know, a couple of days ago on my stream, I was talking about how I was uh, pretty suicidal for a long time. So I'm very familiar with the idea of death and um, frankly, comfortable with it. So yeah, um, come at me. Uh, Jack says people wanted for murder don't have issues with doing it again. If they're crazy and you ridicule them in front of the world, I did time with them. Yes, um, that is another reason why I do not want this case to go, get cold. Um, I want people to keep talking about it. Poe deserves justice, his family deserves justice, and the person who murdered him deserves justice. So if 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 this is how it's got to be, this is how it's got to fucking be. Um, and I'm I'm sure that there's a lot of people talking shit on me right now, and they they will continue to talk shit on me. But you know what? It's nothing new. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's not fine. It sucks. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to shut up or be, um, or, or be, uh, bullied 
into silence like a lot of other people have. A lot of other people have been bullied into silence. Um, I will not be. I have information in front of me. I have information from many people that were directly involved that have been bullied into silence. And even just me reading their messages to each other without using their names, like I'm sure is making a lot of people very uncomfortable. But you know what? Poe is dead. I don't give a shit about your comfort. Grow the fuck up. I'm sorry. Just, I don't give a shit. I really don't. I'm sorry about your fucking discomfort. I'm sorry that it stresses you out. I'm sorry that that you don't want to fucking hear it and you wish it would all go away. Because it fucking won't. It will not go away. Not until certain things come to light. So the more you fight against giving up information on this case, on this situation, the longer this is going to be drawn out. And the people that were closest to this, to this man are still hurting. And they will not stop hurting. Like, there's, it's just festering. This wound is festering. And you're just sitting back and allowing it to fester because you're a selfish, immature fucking asshole. Or because you've been bullied and gaslit. And you know what? I'm sorry. I, I truly am. I know what it's like to be bullied and gaslit by, by narcissists. Um, it's, it's brutal and it sucks and it causes you to question your reality. So if you're out there and you're not speaking up because you are afraid of repercussions, like I'm already putting my face on this. I've already received a ton of backlash, even just for asking questions. So if you would like to submit information to me, um, I'm happy to take a look at it and see what I can do. I'm not promising anything. I can't solve a fucking I mean, I'm not saying I can't. I don't know if I can solve a murder. Um, and that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is fucking put this shit on blast so that this situation doesn't just quietly get buried. We need to talk about this. We need to keep this open. Um, the wound is festering, and some of you have the medicine for it, and you're withholding it. And that sucks. Oh, I'm going to view deleted messages. Oh, that's fucking out of their ass. Never mind. Okay. Anyway, um, so like I said, uh, I have not given you all of the information that I know, or all of the information that, or all of the hearsay and stories and anecdotes from other people that have contacted me during this last year. But um, this is not the last time I'm going to address this. This is this is an open case. This isn't going anywhere. Um, so I expect that um, after this stream, maybe some more information will come to light. And if any of you know anybody who could be of help, or if you have information that could help, um, please don't withhold that information. Come forward. Let's talk about this. Because um, it's, yeah. We need to talk about this. We can't just let this go. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just uh, looking over my notes here, making sure I didn't miss anything important. I don't know if I'm really uh, interested in answering people's questions in chat, but if you have some, that's fine. I'm just going to take a look at this. Okay, despite me saying that I did, 
I didn't want kickdowns during the stream. Uh, a handful of people did kick down, so I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you for us. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, just taking a look at chats. Let's see. <laughs> Mary Tripp points out Lucera apartments are on Dutton Avenue in California. Oh, interesting. I'm going to write that. I have my little fucking notebook in front of me, too, for, like, notes, because I thought maybe I'd have to, like, take notes to keep everything, like, straight, at least, like, code names and shit. But I think I did an okay job. Um, I'm just going to write down something here. Let's see. Jim says, maybe give the number so if someone has information, they can contact the proper authority. Hey, that's a good idea. Here, let me see. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. Um, case number two, one, okay. If you're actually interested, if you have some kind of stake in this, if you have information, um, I will share the wanted poster again, like I said. Um, but here is the number associated with uh, with the case. It's 442-6, sorry, let me start over. 442-265-2045. And if nothing else, you could call them up and be like, Hey, where are you at on the Poe murder case? And maybe if enough people keep fucking bothering them, that they'll get their thumbs out of their fucking asses and do something. Oh yeah, that's something that I never fucking talked about um, during this stream. The absolute incompetence of local law enforcement in Imperial County. Yeah, Imperial County Sheriff's Department, I'm about to fucking drag you. Hell yeah, brace your fucking assholes, dudes. Okay, you know what? You never gave a shit about trans people. There have been multiple people murdered in and around Slab City, in Brawley even. People with real addresses, in real houses, with with real fucking taxes and, you know, fucking legal names that you give a shit about because you don't give a shit about people in Slabs. You think we're fucking animals. You think we're fucking savages. You don't give a shit how many of us die, let alone trans people, you fucking assholes. You have done nothing. You have done nothing but try to bury this case the entire time. Your incompetence, your inadequacy, and your non-cooperation and disrespect of the trans community is directly responsible for this murderer being free. It's your fucking fault that she's out there now. You could have done something and yet you ignored it. You closed your eyes, you did everything that you fucking could to tell us to shut the fuck up. You did everything that you could to make people stop bothering you. You did everything you could to do absolutely fucking nothing. Two years ago, a trans woman in Brawley was murdered in broad daylight in your fucking county, and you did nothing. Her murderer is still out there, too, and it's your fucking fault. You have blood on your fucking hands. The Imperial County Sheriff's Department, fuck you. And in love with health, you ask, what about bringing the media in? Well, I addressed that a couple times during this stream. They're incompetent too. And they don't even know how to fucking respect people's pronouns. They're too hung up on fucking explaining to me why people with XY chromosomes have he, him pronouns. Like, get the fuck out of here. What, uh, getting back to Imperial County Sheriff's Department, oh boy, when I was on the fucking phone with them talking about evidence, um, we were talking about blood that was found at the hot spring. I asked about it um, because a, l a number of people had brought it up to me because they were concerned about it. They were like, I wonder if 
this blood that was found at the hot spring on the same, in, during the same time that Poe went missing and was murdered, uh, wonder if it could be Poe's. So I asked the investigator about it. You know what he said? I asked him about it twice. The first time, he told me that it was dog blood. The second time, he told me that it was a male's blood. He didn't specify that it was a dog. He said it was male blood and that he got hung up on explaining to me how you and I both know that Poe isn't really a man. That's what he was interested in. He was interested in explaining to me the differences between male and female blood, as though he knows jack shit about that. No, he does not. Because actually, it's a fact, um, some cis people have chromosomes that don't actually match their physical biological gender. That is a fact. It's true. You could be somebody with mismatched chromosomes right now, sitting there and not even knowing it. You can't see fucking people's chromosomes. There's no biological identifying factor of a male or a female. I'm not saying that it was Poe's blood, but what I'm saying is that the detective's office was unwilling to even look into it a little fucking bit. They just wanted to say whatever they could to get us off their back. That's the reality of the situation. I'm gonna take a little break here and hit my bait. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna catch up and chat here. See. Oh yeah, here's another this is another example of why the fucking media can't handle this shit. Because we've even got people in chat here fucking making stupid fucking comments about police politics. Like fuck you. Fuck you. Like these mainstream media sources or local media the local media the biggest story that was put out about poe by local media they dead named him and referred to him as like she her and were just so insensitive about the situation like they can't even get past that shit and then of course you talk about the non-cooperation of local law enforcement and their their hindrance of, of investigation and looking at evidence. Um, it took months and months and months. Okay, so when Knives fled to Jackson County, one of the first things she did was take Sean out, uh, have, you know, and, and have them help her to dump a rug and a tarp in the woods and leave it there. Sean contacted Jackson County Police and had them go and collect it. We assumed that they were going to look at it. They didn't. We hounded them for weeks to look at it. They didn't. Eventually, a bunch of people started hounding them to look at it. They refused. They kept saying, oh, we don't know what you're talking about. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, finally, they transferred it to Imperial County, who in February, oh, let's see. Oh, it's on my phone. I didn't, I didn't move it to the computer. In February, they said simply that they looked at the evidence and found nothing. They didn't explain what they did to look at the evidence. I suspect that they barely looked at it at all. And if you're part of the detective team out there that is holding this evidence or looked at it, looked at it, then I challenge you to inform me how exactly you looked at it. What did you do? 
What tests did you put it through? Or did you just put it in a fucking evidence locker and forget about it? Now it's still collecting dust or you threw it away or some shit. Jackson County is not known for giving a shit about trans people either. There, I had heard a story about another trans person that was murdered in Jackson County that never received justice either. This is not an isolated incident. It's, it's, Poe was a troubled human being. And from some accounts that I've heard, he was actually literally asking people to kill him. He was having total meltdown saying, um, I'm an abomination. I'm not a real man. Please kill me. And of course this is, I'm a secondhand account of this, but I heard this from a couple of people that had been in direct contact with him during this time. And I'm not gonna go and um, try to like make sense of things that were only just told to me. Um, I'm not gonna read too far into that, but that is something that I was told by a couple of people that were close to him. And that's fucking sad. Um, but it doesn't, if somebody is in that way, like, you know, it's been, it's been spoken of before how the people around him could have been, could have been acting different toward him, could have maybe given him more support or I don't know. But like, the thing is, there's no fucking infrastructure for people like that. There's no infrastructure for fucking any of us, much less marginalized trans people. And that's why, that's why this situation is so fucked up and why it's so sad and why I do care. I, I could have just stayed out of it. Um, maybe I should have, but we need to talk about this. There are trans people being murdered every day and nobody gives a fuck. Everybody wants to get hung up on politics. And of course it's important to acknowledge the systems of oppression that have perpetuated this suffering. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, an individual lost their life and they were in an immense amount of pain and there was no outlet for them. There was nowhere safe that they felt that they could go. And that's a fucking problem. That's a big fucking problem. So I'm gonna fuck off in a minute here, um, but if I can leave you with anything, it's that we need to, we need to look at, we need to look at these things with honesty. And we need to stop getting hung up on all of this bullshit. If any of you have been in chat and you're like, trying to fucking talk about how trans women aren't really women and trans men aren't really men and how some police are okay, like, shut the fuck up. That's not what we're fucking talking about. And it's, it's, it's fucking disgusting and people are dying. And if there's any trans people in your life that are struggling with with suicidal thoughts or, or self-hate, don't, don't alienate them. Don't treat them shitty. Give them space because it could be the thing that saves their life. Okay? I'm gonna fuck off now and
Thanks for listening. This is probably not going to be the last time I talk on this. And um, I hope you have a good day. Leave space for your trans and marginalized friends, please. Advocate for them. Be an ally. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.